So one thing which is not necessarily a distortion, but is rarely accurate. So when you get, for example, a 40 millimeter lens or a 50 or an 18 millimeter lens, just because they write that on the lens, that's not actually what it is. Okay. So um, there are ways to calibrate your camera and know much more better, much more accurately what the focal length actually is. So when you do uh, a calibration with a program like Photo Modeler or something like that, it'll actually estimate or, or give you a more accurate reading. So sometimes, you know, a, an 18 millimeter lens may be 17.4 or it may be 18.6 or 18.2. So just because it's 18 doesn't mean it is exactly 18. There are some little differences there that have to be um, accounted for when you're doing a, uh, a photogrammetry project. Okay. The uh, other thing that you'll often see, so for example, if you're using um, something like this, like a GoPro, okay, um, they're great little cameras, uh, or a lot of these little action cameras are very, very popular. So because of their size, and you know, you can use them through your phone, you can operate them. Um, there's some advantages to, uh, to using these, they have a very wide field of view. But of course, they're heavily distorted. So one type of distortion that's very common to see is barrel distortion. So you'll see on the edges here for barrel distortion, right? I have these curved lines. I know this, this super mailbox here is uh, square. It should be straight edges, straight size. And usually barrel distortion, uh, when you start at the center, you'll have very little distortion. But as you start to get out towards the edge of the lens, you'll see more and more bending, more distortion. Okay, so again, that's like uh, the 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 analogy of looking through the glass, right? A glass of water, everything is bent. So this is something else that can kind of uh, mess you up. So a good lens or sometimes means you have very little distortion. And years ago, before the digital era, when we were in the film era, they used to make things called metric cameras. And the metric cameras were made to a very, very high degree of accuracy. So they would machine these to very high tolerances. They would measure things to know exactly where, where the film used to sit relative to the lens and how far the lens was to the, the film, like a lot of different things. Today, um, a lot of the photogrammetry software can already compensate for a lot of those distortions. And just to give you an idea, so this was an old, uh, this is a Sony camera, okay? And the Sony camera had, I think this was an 18 millimeter lens way back then, but this is what the image would typically look like here on the left. And you can see, maybe a little bit hard to see, I didn't wanna exaggerate too much on this one, but you'll see a little bit of bending in the ruler here. Right. And normally, if I'm just looking at this image without something which is straight, it's very difficult for me to see the amount of lens distortion that's in there. However, we can correct for this. So using a, a program called Photo Modeler, I had already calibrated my lens and I can tell it to remove the distortion. And you'll see here, there's these little black spaces. So what it's done is it's taken that bending and it's tucked it in from the sides and the top. OK, like here on the right side and on the bottom. So when looking at this image on the right, what do you notice about the space between the uh, left and the right and the bottom and the top? Are they perfectly the same? All right, that's what I'd like you to look at. Right? Are they perfectly the same? All right, you can probably tell that they're not, right? They're a little different. And the reason for that is, is that there are other types of distortion, which means that, okay, the image is not perfectly centered. Right? So there's, there are other things going on there that's causing a, a slight shift to the image. But there are other types of distortion. So one is um, decentering. So decentering is one type. So for example, what happens when the lens okay, is not centered? Right? What happens if there's a slight shift? Okay, what happens, um, I don't know, if you, if you hit it or if it, you know, it maybe something happens and the lens is like, you know, they're not all manufactured 100% identical. And so the optical center of the lens may be shifted left or right. And that could be one reason why the image is not perfectly censored. Or maybe when the sensor was installed, so when this little guy was installed, okay, if it's over left or right or up or down, just by a fraction of a millimeter, it changes the way that the image is projected on this sensor. So those types of things you have to keep in mind. There are also type, different types of distortions. And there's another one called tangential distortion. Now I've exaggerated this, but let's say you have your lens, right? And the lens is tilted um, up or down relative to the body of the camera. Well, that's tangential distortion, up 
right? Up, up like that. And that's just an exaggeration. But if you can imagine when the light comes in here and it projects this on the sensor, it's going to have a shift, right? So it has to adjust for that shift as well. And there are other types of distortions, okay? So there are what are called like nonlinear defects. So uh, fortunately today, when they make lenses, they grind them and polish them to a very, very high degree of accuracy, but they're not all perfect. And so the light, the way it bends across the lens is a little different, right? And, and every lens isn't ground the exact same way. So each lens is, and each lens and especially the camera characteristics, when you put them together, they each have their own ID, let's call it, right? their own their own mentality, their own characteristics. And so th this is what the photogrammetry software is going to be looking to do. Now, the good news is that you don't have to account for all of these because when you're using modern day photogrammetry, right, it will figure it out for you. Okay, so it'll do a lot of this for you. Now, as an exercise, there are um, there are little applications in many uh, software packages now that will let you do a camera calibration. And this is a really good exercise if you just want to see how much distortion is actually in your lens. And it'll read out, give you some, some numbers. Uh, it'll give you like a quantitative analysis on different numbers for your lens and focal length and, and stuff like that and where the, the, the image is projected in the, in the sensor. Um, but anyway, the important part here, here is to understand that there are defects and there's little characteristics on your equipment. The more expensive equipment you get, you tend to have less defects. If I buy a cheapy camera, if I buy something really crappy, okay, you're going to have to get, you're going to have to live with some of that, that distortion and it may cause some problems, okay? Some of it can be compensated for, um, but on some of the equipment, not always.